ORMs are an indirection over your database, an attempt to make SQL obsolete. But solving problems in general ways mean one of two things. Either it's a technological breakthrough or a middle-of-the-road trade-off with existing tech. And I think you already know where ORMs fall. Honestly, it's an abstraction most people use so they don't need to learn SQL. And starting out, it might work well, but eventually you will end up with code that looks like this. As your use cases become more complex, your time will be occupied by just reading the ORM's documentation and how it interacts with the database. That's when the underlying issue starts becoming apparent. An ORM attempts to store your data in an object-oriented format. It's a virtual object store running on top of your physical relational database, and the two are by definition incompatible. It's a well-known issue, the object relational impedance mismatch. Just take the inheritance problem. Say we have a person, student, and graduate student. ORMs would create a table for every unique class. But graduate student is still a person, meaning it should be found when querying that table. So the ORM store the primary keys in the fourth table to ensure they are unique. All of a sudden, what should be a simple index select is a join to get a piece of data by its primary key. Not to mention all the extra complexity we get from having to approximate the relationship aspects compare the very simple case of creating a table. I would argue that the two ORMs are less understandable than SQL. They are leaking it all over, just with a different syntax. Or let's look at this one, when we are trying to select an object by the primary key. The ORM generates this SQL, which instead of being an index lookup, must do a full scan of the entire table. And we can't tell because we're one indirection too far from the database. The dev had no chance to notice. They just had to debug after their production environment became unresponsive. And every ORM has to give you a leaky abstraction of SQL to support at least some more advanced use cases other than just find by ID. They all fall into one of three classes of query families. Query by example, query by API, or query by language. And they are all bad. Let's just look at the queries for logging in a user. For query by example, you would just take your model, fill in username and password, execute the query, and then check that some model was returned. If so, it succeeded. And if it's null, the login failed. Simple enough. And actually works for this use case, but what if we need to find users that don't have a particular username, or count how many have the same first name? We simply can't. Query by API is, well, this. Just SQL, but you call functions instead. I don't know about you, but to me this seems more complex than just a corresponding SQL. Query by language is just something like this. Or SQL with extra annotations. Also, what is this? Is this acceptable partner? Is it executed in the database or in code? And of course, this does a full table scan, and it might even do a cross-join, which would be terrible, but we don't and can't know unless we run the app and check the query the ORM creates. Oh, also, have you seen this? Latency numbers every programmer should know. When we read from a database, we send the data over the network. Clearly, the size matters enormously to the latency of the website. ORMs generally just select all data, the equivalent of select star, not even allowing you to attempt to tune it. Again, probably fine for most use cases, but when you need to optimize, you are unable to. I will also say, one big issue that seems to be far more common with ORMs is not being transactionally correct. Meaning you write some data, then you try to read it to write something else depending on the result. Clearly you expect the read to succeed, you just wrote the data. But because it's not running in the transaction, another query came in here, ran before your read, deleted the data, and what should be infallible fails. Sure, it's also possible when just using SQL, but it seems more common with ORMs. I guess because most users think of it as an object-oriented environment without multiple writers, so we get this massive data correctness problem. With that being said, there are good reasons to use ORMs. They give you some nice tools, like convenient utilities to migrate tables automatically. That is, when you need to add more fields to a table, like adding age to your user. The migration is automatically checked into version control, and if you need to roll back, things just keep working. 
Personally, I prefer just creating separate SQL files with update table statements and checking those in, but I see the value. You could also argue that abstracting away the database is a really good feature as well. But let's be realistic, most people would be just fine using the same database everywhere. You probably don't work at large enough scale where that's a bottleneck. It's a solution invented for a problem that should have never existed, but it happens. You will probably still use some specific feature and end up with non-database agnostic code anyway. Other good reasons include connection pooling, deserializing query results into data structures, I love these two by the way, input validation, etc. In the end, ORMs are kind of awkward and suffer a lot from the last mile problem. They are so close to a 100% complete solution but fall just short. I would say use the parts that make sense for you. Maybe even consider using something like Golang's or Rust's SQL X, which is what I tend to do most of the time. Just don't constrict yourself too much to the ORM's self-imposed paradigm and unlock the real value of your database. That's it for the video. Please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.